وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In this episode inshallah ta'ala I want to talk about dhammu dunuul himma I want to speak against having low aspiration My beloved brothers and sisters low aspiration is a maslakun dani wa markabun wati wa khuluqun saqit wa amalun marzul la yaliqu bi ahli al-fadl wa la yanbaghi min ahli an-nubl wal 'aql low aspiration it's not a praiseworthy path it is not a good characteristics and attribute to have it is amalun marzul it is a bad action and it does not befit a virtuous individual a smart clever person low aspiration is not something that he comes with the people that we see today inma tatafawatu aqdarum these people's levels is all based upon their aspiration some people's aspiration is very high and they reached where they reached and another group of people their aspiration is very low and they are where they are today because of their low aspiration and because of that brothers and sisters the one who has low aspiration la qimata lahu wa la qadr he has no honor and he has no status in the community the reason is because he's a mayyal lid'a he chooses relaxation over hard working and dedication he mukhallad mukhalladun lil ard he's stuck on the earth while the others are high up in the sky he's small even if he's a person who's old in age so this trait of dunuul himma is what i want to talk about in this episode I'm going to mention some malamih some examples of people who've who've got low aspiration for example the pre-islamic poet Imr al-Qais who was 150 years before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was scolded for having low aspiration in when he said the following words he said لنا غنم نسوقها غزار كأن قرون جلتها عصي وتملأ بيتنا إقطا وسمنا وحسبك من غنى شبع وري Where he's held a ke- uh, account to for his low aspiration is when he said وحسبك من غنى شبع وري يعني enough for you to be is to have um something to eat and something to drink there's two possibilities in his statement as abu ubaida said which is give everything one of the interpretation is a'ti kull ma kana laka wara ash-shiba' wal-ri yani give everything just so you can fill your stomach and eat and drink that's it خلاص that's low aspiration that your life is only based on what you eat and what you drink Tarafa was also uh, spoken against when he said the following words for his for low aspiration he said walawla thalathun hunna min ishati alfata wa jiddika lam ahfil mata qama uwadi fa min hunna sabqi aladilat bi sharbatin kumayt mata ma tughla bil ma'i tuzbadi wa kariyin idha nada al mudaf muhanniban كسيد الغضا نبهته المتورد وتقصير يوم الدجن والدجن معجب 
babahkanatin tahta al-khiba'i al-mu'ammadi tarafa is saying three things lawla hubbi thalathu khisalin hunna min al-ladhat he's saying three things that I enjoy my whole entire joy is based on these three things I don't care if I die and death comes to me as long as these three I have shurbu khamrin drinking alcohol wa ighathati al-mad'uri relieving the paranoia wa taqti'u al-yawm alladhi تبلدت سماؤه بالغيوم and also spending the whole day enjoying a beautiful woman those are the three things in my life he's saying this is a person who has low aspiration and his whole entire purpose in life he's saying as long as هذا هو غاية همته that is all طرفة once ومنتهى طموحه and that if death comes to him and he's received those three شرب خمر وإغاثة المذعور وتقطيع اليوم الذي بلدت سماؤه بالغيوم I don't care as long as I get those three that is a person who has low aspiration another example is أبي نواس أبي نواس and he said another example of low aspiration he said إنما العيش سماع ومدام وندام فَإِذَا فَاتَكَ هَذَا فَعَلَى الدُّنْيَا السَّلَامُ He says that this world, the life in this world, إِنَّمَا الْعَيْشُ سَمَاعٌ وَمُدَامٌ وَنَدَامٌ That this life is only based upon these three. This is all that the world is. is. Abu Nuwasin is saying it. The first thing is, إِنَّمَا الْعَيْشُ سَمَاعٌ Life is based on listening to music. وَأَلْحَان يعني موسيقى أن ألحان نصير. ومدامٌ it means shurbu khamri, drinking alcohol. Wanadamunna, it means to sit down and to talk to friends about alcohol and things related to that. فَإِذَا فَاتَكَ هَذَا And if you don't have these three, he's saying, فَعَلَى الدُّنْيَا السَّلَامِ Then peace be upon this dunya, يعني, leave it. There's no life. لا قيمة له تذكر يعني. The dunya has no life to live for. So the important question that we present, سؤال مهم a very important question is here. فَأَيُّ مَعْنَ لِحَيَاتِ هَؤُلَاءِ وَأَمْثَالِهِمْ And what meaning does the life of these people, like Amr Uqais and Tarafa and Abu Nuwas, what benefit does their life hold? وَأَيُّ عَظَمَةٍ يَبْتَغُونَهَا What great thing are they looking for? وَأَيُّ فَضِيلَةٍ يُسَابِقُونَ إِلَيْهَا The question here is, what is it they live for? That, brothers and sisters, that I mentioned is the himam and the amani of those who have low aspiration. As for the people who have high aspiration, who don't see life to just be alcohol and drinking and eating, they come with more than that. They know their presence in this world is just, it's more than eating, drinking, fulfilling their desires. I'm now, inshallah ta'ala, going to mention the story of Zibir Khan ibn Badrin and Hutay'ah. Zibir Khan ibn Badrin was a man that the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam and Abu Bakr and Umar all trusted with the zakat. Yani they would collect the zakat from their people and they would bring it to the Prophet, he would bring it to the Prophet وسلم, and he was the leader of his people. And he would do the same for Abu Bakr and he would collect it. Even the time when the people rejected the zakat and they refused to pay the zakat, uh, Zibir Khan ibn Badrin, he brought the zakat still to Abu Bakr. And he did the same for Umar. When the year of the Maja'ah, the year of the poverty happened, Zibir Khan made his way to um, he made his way to uh, Medina from Iraq to Medina. On the road, he met Hutay'ah. Hutay'ah is a poet, an Arab poet, and he was a man known for his excessive abuse of others, and he would insult others in his poetry. They said he even insulted his mother. He made a poetry about his mother, a poetry about his father, and even his wife. 
there's a lines of poetry he made about how she looks and how despicable her image is and how short this he described her in a way that is not a is not pleasant he even insulted himself when he couldn't find anyone to insult Hutayah they said he saw his own shadow and he insulted himself and they say Hutayah يعني his form and he didn't look very good and he was very short he was not appealing that's what they say about him everyone used to fear Hutayah saying something about them people didn't like it because he was one of the most eloquent poets if he said something about someone people would memorize it and they would say about that person he was like uh, our modern day newslet our media newslet yani the way his poetry would become famous and spoken about and so Hutayya doesn't know Zibir Khan Ibn Badrin like Zibir Khan knows Hutayya he recognized him so he said to him where are you going to and Hutayya was leaving Medina because of the poverty that happened and he was looking for a place to go to eat and for his family so Zibir Khan said to Hutayya where are you heading and he goes I'm heading for a place where I can be taken care of and given Zibir Khan said how about if someone takes care of you gives you date milk and takes good care of you what would you do he said I promise that I would take I would put my poetry in praise of that person and I will be in their service when it comes to my poetry and everyone likes that Hutayya Zibir Khan wrote a letter for him and said take this letter head towards uh, Iraq and give this letter my wife she will take care of you Hutayya came to Iraq he went to the house of Zibir Khan's wife and she took very good care of him now Zibir Khan ibn Badrin has an enemy someone who doesn't like him his name is called Baghid ibn Amir in Shammas he doesn't like uh, Zibir Khan and he always competed with Zibir Khan when it comes to taking care of the guest now he found out Hutayya came to the house of Zibir Khan and now he's going to make poetry for him and those poetry can be against the other tribes so he was worried Zibir Khan went to Medina he's taking the zakat to Umar and he's going to it's going to take him time to come back so Baghid ibn Amirin, he thought, he thought deeply about um, what he should do in order to take this guest Hutayya from Zibir Khan. So they, he went to uh, the wife of uh, Zibir Khan and they said to her, do you know why Zibir Khan is telling you to take care of uh, Hutayya? She said, no. They said it's because and uh, Hutayya has a daughter called Mulaika and Zibir Khan wants to marry her he's thinking about marrying her his, his daughter she said really? they said yes she got angry and she refused to take good care of Hutayya Hutayya is in the house he's not being treated as he was treated before then they came to him and they said hey look how you're being taken care of Zibir Khan is not here his wife is treating you like this leave her and come with us he said no what she does is upon her but what Zibir Khan did for me was honor I'm not gonna leave his house over a period of time when the the dealing of the wife of Zibir Khan was not pleasant Hutayya finally made the decision to leave the house of Zibir Khan and he stayed in the house of Baghid ibn Amr ibn Shammas Baghid tried his best to bring poetry out of Hutayya. He said, make poetry about this man, the way he dealt with you. Hutayya refused. He said, I don't want to do poetry and I'm not willing to make poetry. And I'm not going to say anything about him. So Zibir Khan came. He went to his house and he asked his wife, where is Hutayya? She said, he left. He went to the house of Baghid ibn Amir and he said, bring her out, my guest. You've unjustly taken my guest from me. They fought between themselves until they feared that there might be a war between the tribes. Then they reconciled between the two of them. And Baghid ibn Amir ibn Shammas and he said, look, Hutayya is a free man. If he wants to stay with me, he can stay with me. And if he says, I want to leave, he can leave. I am not going to kick a man out of my house. 
Hutayya was asked, hey, do you want to go to uh, Zibar Khan's house? Uh, or do you want to stay in the house of uh, Baghid ibn Amir? He said, I want to stay in the house of Baghid. Zibar Khan said to Hutayya, Hutayya, are you staying here because of something you have against me? He said, no, Allah, I don't. Zibar Khan said, you can stay with uh, Baghid ibn Amir if you want then. Zibar Khan left and stayed home. Zibar Khan then found a poet. He looked for a poet and he asked that poet to make poetry against Baghid ibn Amir, who is the host for Hutayya. Hutayya didn't like poetry being made against the man who's hosting him. And Baghid was whispering to uh, Hutayya, telling him, bring some poetry out. So he said a few lines against um, Zibir Khan ibn Badrin, but nothing hurt Zibir Khan except one line of poetry, and that's the line of poetry I want you to listen to. He said about him, "Da'il makarima la tarhal li bughiyatiha, waqud fa inna ka anta ta'imu al kasi." He said, "You, your significance, Zibir Khan, is that all you live for is drinking and eating." Your aspiration in life is only to eat and drink. This one line made Zibar Khan excessively angry. And he took a riding beast and he headed his way to Medina. He went to Umar, Amir al muminin Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he said, Umar, Hutay has did this to me. And he read the line of poetry, Da'il makarima la tarhal li bughiyatiha, waqud fa'inna ka anta ta'im al-kasi. And he said, this is what he said about me. Umar radiallahu anhu being an eloquent man understood, but he didn't want to bring something between two people. So what Umar radiallahu anhu did say, he said is, he said, this is a mu'ataba. He's just scolding you. This is not hijat. He's not insulting you. Then he said, um, Zibr Khan ibn Badr, and he said, wallah, he is. And the, there's the Sahabi who was known as the, the poet of the Prophet Sallallahu Hassan ibn Thabit. They took the poetry to him and he affirmed that. Umar radiallahu anhu then brought Zibr Khan ibn Badrin and he was arrested. Then Zibr Khan, uh, sorry, Hutay, Hutay was brought and it was put, Zibr Khan requested for Hutay to be arrested. And Umar radiallahu anhu put him into prison and he stayed there and Hutay started to write poetry to um, Umar trying to get him to release him. And finally, Umar chose to release him after a while. And then Umar, what he did was he took a blade and he said, bring out your tongue. I'm going to cut your tongue. And then Hutayya said, Umar, don't cut my tongue. Wallahi, I've insulted my own mother. I've said about my mother what I said about her. And I've said about my father what I said about him. And I said about my wife what I said about her. And I even said some things about myself. Would Zibir Khan be a problem for me? Umar said, what did you say about your dad? And what did you say about your mom? And what did you say about yourself? And every time he, he read his poetry, Umar would laugh. Umar then said, go and don't ever say anything about anyone. What I want from the story is, look at what hurt Zibir Khan, Ibn Badrin, that to accuse this, because Zibir Khan was a very well known for his karam, taking care of guests. So he said, that my entire life is based on what? Al-akl wa shurb wal libas. I only live to drink and eat and clothes. Allah he said, no. So he had high aspiration. He didn't have the kind of aspiration that Ibn Qais was mentioning in the lines of poetry or Tarafa was mentioning. Walidharika, some of the Arab poets, like Hatim al-Ta'i, for example, look what he said. He said, لَحَ اللَّهُ سُعْلُوكًا مُنَاهُ وَهَمُّهُ من العيش أن يلقى لبوسا ومطعما يرى الخمسة تعريبا وإن يلقى شبعة يبيت قلبه من قلة الهم مبهما يعني he's speaking against a person his whole entire life is based upon لبوسا ومطعما what you're going to drink what you're going to eat another poet for example he said إذا ما الفتى لم يبغي إلا لباسه ومطعمه فالخير منه بعيد if a person, he doesn't desire anything. 
illa liba so except the clothing that he wants to wear he's going to wear like what clothes am i going to wear today how that's all he lives for wa mat'amahu and what is he going to eat fal khayru minhu ba'idu know that this person good is far from them so uh, making your life based upon what am i going to eat what am i going to drink is considered to be from dunul himma it's not considered from high aspiration i'm going to conclude in this episode inshallah ta'ala this episode with the statement of Imam al-Rafi'i rahimahullah, the teacher of Shaykh al-Uruba, Muhammad, Muhammad Shakir, his teacher al-Rafi'i, has a kitab called Wahyu al-Qalam. He said something very powerful, talking about the people whose aspiration is very low, and very weak, They're like, that they are like the cattles. يَأْكُلُونَ وَيَتَمَتَّعُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُوا الْأَنْعَامُ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوًا لَهُمْ Their life is only what am I going to eat, what am I going to drink, how am I going to fulfill my desires. He said, وَأَمَّا ضَعْفُ الْهِمَّةِ فمنزلة الحيوان الذي لا هم له إلا أن يوجد كيفما وجد وحيثما جاء موضعه من الوجود إذ هو يولد ويكدح ويكد ليكون لحما وعظما وصوفا ووبرا وشعرا أثاثا ومتاعا وكأنه ضرب من النبات إلا أنه نوع آخر, نوع آخر من المنفعة he says a person who has low aspiration, he's like the animal. لا he has no desires. Except إلا أن يوجد كيف ما وجد. And the haywan, what does it have in life? He's, the, the animal comes, it goes, another animal will eat it, it tries to escape from that. What are you going to eat later? That's all it, it lives for. And the animal just turns out to be a what? A meat that someone's going to eat, a bone that's going to be used for some benefit here or there. You know, the skin is going to be taken you know, make a jacket or something out of it. Um, that's the benefit that it has. And some people, that's what their life is about. Low aspiration, very low aspiration. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this youtube channel simple like this video and click subscribe why it will allow youtube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of allah you'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.